So let's talk about financing a business. To make money from a small business, the owner first has to provide or find capital or someone to support the business and keep it running smoothly, particularly if expenses come up, if there are surprises, or if the business wants to grow. Often a small business owner has to put up a significant percentage of the necessary capital, him or herself. Few new business owners have a large amount of capital in their, of their own that they can uh, put in, in service of a business, so they need additional financing. It's also a good idea to consider putting or looking for outside financing, even if you have the assets available to you, because going and convincing an investor to provide significant resources to your firm can provide some additional uh, disciplines to your business and your thinking about the financial stability and financial viability of your company. Uh, small business owners often use debt financing from banks or from the Small Business Administration to start their own organizations. The challenge with that is that often those kinds of loans all have to be signed for by you as from a personal liability perspective. So you, you are taking on a risk associated with your personal assets uh, for the start of your business. Uh, that this is one of the challenges with raising money with debt. You're not really raising the money based upon the business. You're raising the money based upon your own willingness to pay and the fact that the banks have recourse to go after your personal assets. This can be quite risky in starting a business. So it's often a good idea to go outside. The, this involves in in startup businesses this often involves equity finance it's the most important source of funds for a new business uh, because the by selling equity you actually bring on additional owners as well as yourself to become responsible for the business and to offer ideas and insights into the operations of the business many owners include among their personal resources the ownership of a home and its accumulated value or an insurance policy and its accumulated value or savings account a new business owner may sell or borrow against the value of such assets to obtain funds to operate the business. Um, as I mentioned before, this creates some additional risk. Sometimes you bring in other personal assets such as your computers and desktop and furniture and all of those things. Um, any assets that are brought in by the owner, either yourself or by looking for ownership elsewhere, is called equity financing. The owner is using real personal assets rather than borrowed funds from outside sources to start the business. Small businesses can also obtain equity financing from outside investors. We'll talk about that in a minute. They sell stock in the business, perhaps to family members, friends, employees, or other outside investors. We'll talk about those next. In Startup businesses that have a high a potential for significant growth in the creation of value and may ultimately lead to a public company or a company that can be sold to third parties, uh, venture capitalists are interested in providing equity resources for those companies. Venture capitalists are persons or organizations that agree to provide some funds for new businesses in exchange for ownership interest in stock of the company. Venture capital started in the 1960s in, uh, in a large scale with the invention of the personal computer, the uh, microprocessor. Um, some people that had built companies based upon that new invention had significant assets at their disposal and they decided to help other companies start to take advantage of these new developments. Uh, they typically come in with an investment that allows the company to grow with the notion of eventually selling out and getting their getting a appreciated capital back in, a, in significantly in excess of the money they put in. Usually say rule of thumb is within um, five to ten times their money back in three to five years. So it's a, a venture capitals look for extremely high rates of return. Um, they purchase a small amount of the business at a low price and they hope that they'll be able to sell it for a significant profit later on once the business has been successful. Although these forms of equity financing have helped many small businesses, they require the business, the small business owner, 
to share the profits and also have a plan which has significant, significant upside potential and growth. Uh, so they share the growth of the business and the profits of the business with the investors. Venture capitalists are usually experienced and successful people. They're investors who find businesses in which they would like to invest. The money in which the venture capitalists or VCs invest is a pool of money called a fund, which they often raise from third parties. So there are certain standards that a startup has to meet before they'll be considered for this kind of investment. This means that if a startup does not have sales or real evidence of having been successful or having significant potential to be successful because of the intellectual property it's developed, VCs will be reluctant to invest their money. The business has to be have a very high uh, probability of success and very high potential returns. Um, the money, if it poses too much of a risk or if the returns, even if it's successful or not high enough, venture capitalists would simply venture capitalists as a class would simply not be interested in investing. Another type of investor is an angel investor. These are usually individuals that are uh, they call high high net worth individuals, affluent individuals who invest their own money to help get businesses started. Um, they tend to invest in a handful of businesses. They judge a startup sometimes less harshly than VCs. If they, they are responsible from their own perspective, and oftentimes they are interested in investing in companies where they see an upside, even though there might be a little bit more risk. Um, they believe in the business, but at the same time, they um, they, are, they also are looking for extremely high returns. So one of the advantages of going to venture capitalists uh, in the later stages or an uh, angel investor in the beginning stages is that the additional insights of people that have are putting their real money at risk is often very helpful in framing out the business model and the business plan for the business before taking on the risks of starting it with your own capital anyway it's always good to have a partner in fact venture capitalists often want other venture capitalists involved so they have access to and the benefit of the insights of other professional investors to help make the business succeed. The goal is to make the business succeed, although oftentimes the interactions um, might be quite frank and critical. The intent is to improve the potential for the business to succeed. Besides equity investment, there's possibilities for debt financing. Once again, for an individual starting a business, this is not necessarily financing for the business right away until the business is up and running, but more the individual raising money on their own. Sometimes they borrow more than half even of their resources from banks based upon their own credit. Um, on the federal level, you can get a small business administration to provide some assistance are qualifying to qualifying businesses. They can also look for family and friends as sources of long-term loans or other assets, such as computers or automobiles that are exchanged for the ownership interest in the business. In such cases, the business owner can usually structure a favorable repayment schedule, sometimes negotiate an interest rate below current bank rates. Anyone lending to a friend or a family member for a venture should state in the agreement clearly in, clearly in writing any deal or any rates or whatever that are uh, expected before any money changes hands. This, uh, this sort of financing among personal family members and friends uh, can, be, uh, can be challenging to personal relationships. It can be difficult um, since so many businesses struggle that it's something to really uh, consider whenever taking this particular approach. There's uh, things to consider when doing debt financing. Uh, the bank will often require the entrepreneur to put up collateral. Uh, that's a financial interest of some kind, perhaps property, perhaps a piece of equipment, a car, an automobile, um, stocks and bonds, whatever, to guarantee payment. Additionally, a small business owner will have to uh, provide some personal property um, also, uh, the, the, whenever that's done and the loan is offered against the property, like a building or a car, it's called a mortgage. Uh, if a business fails to repay the loan, this is the business, that, that lending institution may put a claim on the collateral and take the, the house or the car to recover its loss. 
uh, banks and other financial institutions can also grant a business line of credit. This is an agreement in which the financial institution promises to lend the business a predetermined sum up to a predetermined sum that is a line of credit the entrepreneur needs to take quick advantage of something for example to make a payroll to make a payment or if there's some kind of a, a problem maybe some spoilage maybe if you're a restaurant you one of your refrigerators go and you lose things you need to have quick access to funds in order to recover to continue to operate and drive your business forward that's the idea of of a line of credit there's also um, there's also the idea of what's called trade credit, which means that if people owe you money, you can uh, borrow money on those receivables. Uh, small businesses can obtain funding in this way. Sometimes suppliers allow the business to take possession of the goods and services they want to sell and pay later or on installments. Occasionally, small businesses uh, can barter trading their services for uh, other services that are necessary um, in order to reduce the amount of cash that's required in across the business. Um, one of the things to think about and to keep in mind as you're deciding to develop a new business or start a new business is the importance of having access to required cash flows. As we mentioned earlier, undercapitalization is one of the major causes of failure. So you want to make sure you have uh, have access to backup funding if necessary. Uh, even if you're successful as a business, the lack of funds can ultimately lead to your demise. So it's something to be very careful with, and it's a very important element of running a business, understanding the financial aspects of it. In the next lecture, Lecture 8, we'll start talking about getting yourself started in a new business. Once you've decided you understand that you want to do this and you've made the choice to be an entrepreneur, you have the idea for the business and you've worked through how your financing arrangements will occur, let's talk about getting started. We'll do that next.